Hey, welcome to Deep Learning Explainer. And today our topic is revealing the dark secrets of BERT. Uh, I think this is a very interesting topic. And uh, it's actually a paper from UML. And uh, this paper basically uh, wants to discuss why uh, the BERT attention mechanisms are effective or to be a, to be more accurate, I actually want to discuss why the BER models, BER architectures are so effective, and uh, it focuses on the attention mechanisms of the BER, and it do a, it actually uh, does a lot of uh, in-depth analysis of attention uh, layers of the BER, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, BER's effectiveness and is uh, BER is very effective. But the problem is, uh, the effectiveness of the bird is not really well studied. Uh, most people uh, are using bird, and the uh, bird are actually uh, uh, a lot of uh, state of the art. Uh, the majority of NLP tasks are uh, basically uh, being solved uh, in the state of the art manners by bird. So people use the pre-trained BER model and uh, fine-tune those BER model uh, for a given task, then normally you can achieve the, the, the state-of-the-art results. But, but why is so effective? This is actually uh, what this paper want to discuss. So uh, what this paper uh, uh, contributions are, uh, as contrib contributions are, basically it provides us the methodology to analyze BERT's attention head and uh, to kind of discover what kind of linguistic information is, is encoded in the BERT attention layer. And uh, it shows some evidence of the BERT's uh, over parameter titrations. Basically, it's saying uh, a lot of attention heads actually are not really helpful. We can just uh, uh, remove them and uh, your results will probably not really drop. And lastly, it, it basically to prove this, it disables some of the, some of the attention heads and they it end up leading to an increase in performance. So it's a very comprehensive experiment and uh, methodology. It's very enjoyable paper, paper, that's why it just published last year and you already got 39 citations today. Uh, so before we dive in, if you would like to receive more deep learning videos like this, don't forget to subscribe so you can receive uh, my videos in the first place. And also your subscription is actually my greatest uh, motivation to make more videos like this. So thank you for your subscription and without uh, further ado, let's dive right in. So um, we will probably need to understand uh, what a BER architecture is. BER architecture is actually uh, the transformer architecture. Um, and uh, what consists of uh, a BER architecture is basically they have one attention block and the one feedback block. Basically, these two blocks consist of one BER layer. And uh, by combining the attention and uh, the feedback, it's actually uh, have a very very comparable result, and it's even more uh, expressive than the recurrent neural models, which are which were kind of popular in among uh, five years ago and uh, three years ago, until the the transformer models like started to you know emerge. Uh, I think there was a time uh, around uh, twenty seventeen. <laughs> So uh, attention mechanisms is actually a very important part in the transformer model. And uh, this paper want to uh, kind of uh, dig into uh, more deeply about this mechanism. So uh, uh, let me just uh, walk through your very simple uh, the function of the me attention mechanism. Basically, uh, when, you, when you do the transformer model, Bird model, you you input the, 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 the list of tokens, and uh, your attention you will go through the attention layer first. The attention layer will tell the feedback model 
which token you should attend more when you process a, give, a certain given token. And uh, this is kind of like how, how the human brain works, because when I say the sentence, you probably don't pay the equal attention to every word I say. You pay more attention to certain keywords, depending on what you want to achieve. Maybe when we are talking about a restaurant, then when I talk, when I say the name of the certain restaurants, when I say the name of certain dishes, certain cuisine, then you will pay more attention to that. And maybe when that, when we are talking about um, computer science, you will pay more attention to computer science keywords. So this really task depending uh, the attention patterns. Okay, so uh, this the a little bit like rough background knowledge. So this paper just try to answer uh, uh, these four questions. These four questions. The first question is what are the common uh, common attention patterns are there in in the bird attention heads? Uh, and uh, also they want to know uh, what what kind of changes are there uh, after you you fine tune the model? Because when you train the bird model, you use the language model modeling task to 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 train the pre train the bird model, and uh, you fine tune the the, the pre trained bird language models. Uh, with your downstream tasks and uh, will attention attention patterns change a lot uh, after fine tuning this is what this paper want to discuss and uh, 30 uh, this paper want to understand more are there what kind of uh, linguistic knowledge is encoded in the bird attention heads and lastly uh, you want to know uh, how different are those dif attention heads are? Because we know there are a lot of attention heads uh, in bird model, and uh, um, in the small the bird model that this paper is using is basically use the twelve layer bird model. It's considered medium size, and you have twelve attention heads in each layer, and you have uh, twelve layers. So uh, in total, you have one hundred forty four attention heads. So many attention heads, but are they really encoded the information that's very different from each other? Over there, actually, a lot of duplication. Not sure about that. And this paper will answer you this question. So, uh, when we go into the deeper part of this paper, we need to define what the attention heads are, uh, what what attention maps are. So basically, when you process a, a sequence of uh, words, let's say we 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 enter one sentence, uh, he was becoming agitated, and. Uh, uh, in this case, let's say we have uh, uh, how many how many tokens are there? Uh, we have seven tokens in this given input. So the bird model will generate seven by seven attention attention maps, basically telling you when you process the given word. Let's say we are the model is processing the word he, then what kind of attention that you need to pay to each token in this? given sentence in this given input it's not necessarily to be a, a sentence and uh, in this case in this attention head it tells this uh, the model you should pay more attention to agitated than the other tokens when you process the token he and when you process the, the token becoming then you should pay more attention to the separate uh, token which is a spatial token so depending on uh, the attention head, every attention head will also have the, the different patterns to, to, to focus on. So this is this, they say maybe this attention head number one, then it tells the model should focus on more uh, agitated when you process the, the token he. But maybe in the attention head number two, you will tell the, the model actually when you process the attention, uh, the token he, then you should, pro you should focus on the word was was more than the other tokens. So depending on what kind of patterns this encoding this attention head, your attention will be different. Even you are processing, the model is processing the same token, the same given token. So this is how the attention heads works. Basically, you will encode the, uh, it will encode a lot of different information in different attention heads. And there are 144 attention heads in the, the, the bird model this paper is using. So, 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 so in, in practice, we actually uh, have the max sequence length for the given input. In the, normally, in the bird model, it's like 512. So you, have, you will have 512 times 512 uh, attention maps. And uh, definitely, 
when you do the inference, it's not every your sequence will have 112 that many tokens. So uh, maybe you only like this this example they only have seven tokens. So the rest of the tokens you will be just a mask as zero. So you you actually uh, not really calculate the t attention values there. So 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 to to put it simply, you you will have only you will just have the the number of tokens the input number of tokens they input times number of tokens they input that big of attention has and the max mind of the, the attention maps is uh, the max length of your sequence times the max length of your sequence so yeah and the, 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 the darkness of this uh, uh, this map is means like the attention the, the darker this uh, value is means it pays more attention this is just an example so in this paper, he actually uh, classify attention patterns to into five different category. Uh, the first one is we call vertical. The vertical means uh, uh, basically it's like no matter what kind of uh, tokens you are processing, you always pay attention to the same token. They say uh, the previous example, he is becoming agitated. And no matter what kind of uh, token he is, becoming agitated no matter, no matter what what kind of token in this sentence is processing you always set focusing on this kind of a particular tokens and uh, in this case in this example you focus always focus on the separated uh, separation uh, spatial tokens and the, what these tokens is it basically it tells the model all oh, uh, the, the tokens before this separation separation tokens is actually from a sentence one and the tokens bef after this separation tokens is actually from a sentence two if you are not really familiar with this I will suggest you go back to the Burr original paper he actually uh, explained uh, what this token is pretty well and uh, there are another there is another uh, special token which we call classification token basically tells the Burr uh, uh, it's like the for for the class, class, classification task only. When when you do the classification task uh, uh, with the Burr model, you only make a decision based on the classification tokens representation. Because basically, after the Burr, but every layers of the Burr, you will have the representation of every token. But what kind of token you want to use to make your final decision uh, for this given sequence? And uh, basically. In the Burr paper, it says the Burr model only uses the classification tokens representation to make a final decision. So it's kind of a special token for the classification task. So in this vertical says, uh, this kind of vertical attention is like no matter what tokens it, the model is processing, you all only focus on one uh, a certain specific, specific tokens. And it could be uh, separators, it could be a uh, classification tokens. So it's vertical mean if you look look into the attention map, it looks like vertical. So that's what, what uh, that's why its name is vertical. And another one is uh, diagonal. Diagonal basically means when you process. Let's let, let's say uh, one example when you, the model is processing the token number five, and when you process the no token number five, it, it will. Uh, only pay, pay attention to token number four, token number five, and token number six. Basically, you only pay attention to the previous token, or the given token, or the next token. And the, the reason behind this is basically when when you train the bird doing the using the language modeling pre-training, uh, uh, you basically uh, the previous tokens and uh, the next token are most important tokens in doing the uh, language modeling, right? So this kind because of this kind of nature, so you will always pay the attention to the surrounding tokens because language modeling basically is to predict the the world the, the world that's uh, the mask the mask world that you don't really know and uh, the most important information is the surrounding token the previous and the next token so that's why this model is have a, a lot of attention has that pay extra attention to the surrounding tokens previous and next specifically so this is a diagonal and there's another another reason they cause this basically is the English uh, inherent uh, property of English syntax basically it's like uh, I will cover that later because I don't want to confuse you too much so it's diagonal patterns here and the third pattern is uh, vertical and the diagonal basically just happen to couple these uh, two patterns 
the first one and the second one together. So these kind of three patterns uh, are not really surprising to for us because the nature of the spatial tokens of the blur and the nature of the the, the language modeling uh, as a pre-training task it just uh, consists of these uh, three categories. And the fourth category is actually more interesting is about block. So what it actually means is when you, uh, let's say, uh, like in this example, you have two sentences uh, starting from classification token and to a separator. You have one sentence and starting from separator to another separator, you have a six sentence number two. And uh, uh, what the model actually paying attention is when you process the tokens that within sentence number one, you will only pay attention to the token that is also in the sentence number one. And when you process the token in sentence number two, you will only pay attention to the tokens that's in the sentence number two, which makes sense because for certain tasks, uh, I mean, linguistically speaking, uh, the tokens uh, within the same sentence, they're definitely more important than, than these tokens in uh, the other sentence. The, yeah, definitely it's nothing like the tokens in the other sentence are not important, but just the, the tokens within sent sentence uh, have more importance than the others. So in this case, you have two, two sentences, you have this kind of block-like uh, uh, patterns. That's uh, how you get this its name. And the last one, the fifth category is called heterogene heterogeneous. Basically, what the, what this means is uh, when, when these patterns that doesn't belong to the previous four, you will become this category heterogeneous. And uh, this is actually the most uh, interesting uh, category because it probably contains the, uh, a lot of uh, linguistic knowledge in this category. And this paper will invest investigate it more on this category to see are they really encoded uh, a lot of uh, linguistic information or just uh, something random. Okay, so you can see that's no that that's no specific patterns that you can see from 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 this graph. So it's the last category, and uh, what's interesting is. Uh, yeah, this 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 slide is basically saying uh, the, the meanings behind that spatial token is like uh, focusing on the course length course sentence reasoning because uh, when you do the course sentence listening uh, reasoning reasoning you will those kind of separator to separate those two sentences are are very important and uh, the previous and next token uh, uh, attention patterns basically is for language modeling the, the nature of language modeling. And uh, and uh, this paper actually uh, they they label the uh, attention attention patterns manually, and uh, after that they train a, a CNN model to predict that. And what I mean by they label the uh, attention uh, attention map is actually they have uh, around one thousand input example. Basically, it's like a an an utterance. Then you fit into a text sequence. You f you fit into the sequence to, into the model. Then the model will have attention head. Uh, attention attention head will generate attention map. Then 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 they visualize this attention map. Then use human to categorize. Do you think uh, this? Uh, which category do you think this attention map belongs to? Then human label them, and definitely they have one 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 thousand label, and they remove the. Uh, they have some criteria for selecting those uh, labels, so they in the end they only have they remove the rest of the unqualified one. They only have uh, four hundred examples, and they they use that four hundred example to train train the model, the CNN model to classify. And uh, because uh, you 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 cannot really just use humans to to label all these uh, uh, so many attention maps. So they train the model, and this model can can achieve eighty six percent F one score. Uh, on classifying these uh, attention attention maps, and they use this uh, trend CNN model to estimate attention patterns for the glue task. Glue task is a natural language understanding task. It consists of the more than I think around ten uh, NLP tasks. So yeah, after they train uh, the CNN model, they use that to 
classify the attention maps they generate the body model for 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 the glue tasks the, the examples in the glue tasks so as you can see uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, attention patterns are actually from actually are kind of uh, categorized as a uh, vertical and uh, they are also around like 30 percent of them are heterogeneous uh, which are the ones they are most interesting this is like and also their distributions uh, are different across different tasks and uh, yeah this is like kind of interesting because the diagonal um, distribution diagonal patterns is not they many it's not that many across different tasks okay so there are a few experiments they they did so the first experiments they want to basically to discuss the relation specific heads in birth basically it's like are there certain attention heads they are looking for the relation between objects or between entities or words in uh, in the text so uh let me give you one example this is the example uh from the the, the frame they defined by the frame net so basically it's like uh, there's certain relation between words issue and uh, adjust the issue they need to be adjust they, they kind of a, is a relation and uh, also there's another relation between future studied and the adjust so the way they want to see when the model uh, is processing certain tokens like issues with issues which will the model pay more attention to the the token adjust because this kind of relationship is actually uh, linguistically meaningful they want to investigate this so you, you can uh, study this by looking into the attention head uh, for for a given sequence like this they will enter a lot of these kind of sentences and to see if they can see this kind of pattern so uh, this is one example they like they, they give us uh, basically it's the sentence uh, he was becoming agitated and uh, in the frame net there's one friend says uh, there's he the token he has certain relation with agitated and uh, they found out uh, actually there are two attention heads out of 144 are looking for a certain spatial relation between words like when the model is processing the token he and you pay the extra attention to the word agitated but unfortunately, there are the majority of attention heads don't have this kind of attention patterns. The only two out of 144, which is considered very, very low percentage. Uh, and what this tells us, this actually tells us that the model does not look into too much linguistic relations uh, among among words. And how you can interpret this? Uh, graph is like this is like uh, from the layer 1 to layer 12 and uh, attention head number 1 to attention head number 12 so uh, this attention head the one highlighted is basically from the layer the middle layer and there's like the six attention head it has this kind of uh, attention pattern and uh, another attention head in the first layer also has this kind of uh, linguistic attention pattern but the rest of them I just now I just not very uh, like uh, significant and uh, by doing this kind of thing you will have uh, uh, 144 attention maps then they look into they manually look into every one of them to see if there are uh, very spatial patterns among words the, the answer is probably no and the second experiment they, they did was um, how much change uh, uh, the attention patterns have after fine tuning? So basically, uh, what it what it did 
was to use the pre-trained model to just uh, do the downstream task and also use the pre-trained model and the fine tune on the downstream task and uh, look into their attention heads. And another one is basically the same model architecture but without doing any pre-training, just directly train uh, on the downstream tasks. And as you can see, the performance of the pre trained model is definitely pretty low. I, I don't even know why they want to compare the pre trained model without any fine tuning with the fine tuning model. Because uh, if you think about this, it's very weird. If you are doing uh, sentiment classification, you will have the prediction layer which will have the binary output. But the model, if the model is not fine tuned, it's not fine tuned at all, the model will not know. It's like the uh, the label one. They say you have the output of label one and label two. Which label is means negative senti sentiment, and which label means the positive one? The model will not have any clue on this at all. So definitely, therefore, your F1 score for the model easily to get zero because the model doesn't know anything, right? And uh, a lot of accuracy will just uh, run would become like random random number. You, even you have the random number generator, you will have a similar performance of the pre-trained model. So that's very weird to compare uh, the pre-trained model without any fine-tuning with the fine-tuned model. So this is a fine-tuned model basically is to fine-tune, you, you plug in the prediction layer and the fine-tune. And this is the initialized... Uh, oh, this this is the this is the initialized with pre-trained. Pre basically, you use the, the pre-trained weight and then you fine-tune it. This is the fine-tuned model. So, so the model's performance will be very, very high. And this is like the fine... They fine-tune the bar model with the normal distribution of the weights. Basically, they, they use a normal distribution to initialize the bar, the weights in the bar layers, every layers, then you fine-tune. So basically, it means you don't really use any pre-trained language model, and you just train on the, the task directly. And uh, as you can see, some of the tasks, they have very low accuracy. Uh, which is weird because even you don't use any pre model, pre weights, your models should still achieve certain level of results. This is very counterintuitive and uh, not really cons uh, doesn't really make sense. I think this like this, they have zero F1 score m means like th there's something wrong, something wrong in the training process. But anyway, this is not an important part of this paper. The important part is like they want to know well, compared to the pre model. Uh, language model, language pre language model in pre chamber and uh, the fine tune bar, how much the attention has changed. And how they compare that is they, uh, they do the cosine similarity between the pre uh, attention attention weight and uh, the fine tune attention weight. Uh, the cosine similarity means uh, if the, the value is 1, means uh, it's exactly the same. The value is 0, means they are totally different. So by doing this, you can see how much changes there are. And so this is like the layer, the x, the y axis is layer, and uh, the x axis is the attention head. So you can see uh, for different tasks, they have different distribution, but they have a chain. Means um, the, the last few layers actually they change a lot. They change a lot. The attention patterns, they ch change a lot after fine-tuning and that makes sense because uh, a lot of people actually already says or oh, a lot of experiments indicate indicating that the, the, the task a lot of task specific knowledge are embedded in the last few layers so that's why uh, the attention has patterns changed so much in the last few layers and you can see this phenomenon is quite strong quite obviously uh, even of course seven for these several seven different tasks, they have very very uh, consistent patterns. Like in the last of two three layers, the attention patterns change a lot, and in the first few layers, they are actually doing just a language uh, encoding work. Basically, it's like task independent. It doesn't really matter what task you it is. The language information they just do the maybe syntactic parsing, POS tagging, that kind of stuff. But this is what we imagine uh, it's supposed to, I mean, likely. So uh, this is a very interesting way to do comparison. And one thing, one thing worth noting is the, this attention, this kind of uh, graph is 
they do the constant comparison between attention weight and the previously few examples they do it's not it's not cosine comparison they do some comparison uh, they feed into the, the example and uh, generate the attention value for each token so they have a little bit different if and the third experiment is they uh, uh, they want to know uh, our attention has actually attained to certain uh, linguistic features uh, what I mean by this is basically they have certain tokens they are particularly interested in, for example, nouns, verbs, pronouns, or subjects, objects, neg negation words. Uh, they, uh, on the model, pay more attention to these certain, uh, uh, certain tokens, regardless of what tokens it's actually processing. So basically, they, what they do, what they do, what they investigate is they sum up the attention weights assigned to the tokens of interest. Let's say uh, for the first pattern that we want to investigate is num. So they sum up the, the attention value of uh, every num in this in given input, and to see how much this value is. Definitely, they also normalize by the length of the sequence because the longer the sequence is, the more num you will have, the, then you, when you sum up, the value will be larger. So they, they kind of normalize by the length of sequence. So they also calculate for the verb, pronoun, every kind of uh, token of uh, interest. Then they also calculate for the spatial tokens, classification token, and uh, the separate tokens. Yeah. And uh, what I found, uh, they actually didn't find uh, there's any spatial attention patterns. They focusing on these spatial tokens. Uh, it's not spa it's the token of interest here: nouns, verbs, pronouns, this kind, uh, etc. They they didn't the model didn't really focus, and instead they found is model actually focusing on the, the separator tokens uh, a lot. So you can see this is of course the layer and the attention in, in the last few layers, the uh, models are focusing on the separator tokens a lot. Uh, I think that's a pretty uh, interesting theme. In the first few layers, model just don't care about separator, uh, which I think this can be interpreted in many different ways. And another another finding is the model. Uh, focus on the classification tokens more in, in the first few layers and then in the last few layers they just don't care about that. And the fourth experiment they did was they want to know uh, what the tokens, token to token attentions are. Uh, how they do this is basically they want to know uh, the attention patterns between tokens in, in the same sentence. And there are several several linguistic patterns that uh, will likely to be attend be attended by the model. The first one is uh, model uh, verb subject relation, the verb and the subject uh, in a sentence. And another one is a noun and a pronoun uh, relation. Uh, for example, he, he uh, Tom is a doctor and he went to a restaurant yesterday. In, in this given input, Tom and the he actually means the same thing, and uh, they they are suspecting probably the bird will focus a lot when the when when the when the model is processing the token he, and the bird will pay extra attention to the token Tom because he actually means Tom. This will make sense, uh, and that will be interesting to see if they the model actually uh, does this, and. Uh, that's what they want to do is when the model is processing the classification token uh, in the last layer, uh, what kind of uh, tokens the model are paying extra attention to? So there are these three different things this uh, experiment wants to uh, investigate. And the result of the, the verb subject and the noun pronoun uh, attention relation uh, is they actually didn't find uh, the kind of a uh, obvious patterns for them and uh, there are a few reasons the first reason is just uh, the birds didn't really pay extra attention to them and the second one is it's actually uh, coincided with uh, the previous and the next world pattern because uh, like I mentioned earlier 
The Bloom model always pay the attention, extra attention to previous words and uh, the next word because of the uh, the way it got pretend. And definitely, this kind of uh, previous and next words just happen to uh, be very likely to be a verb-subject relation or noun and a pronoun relation. Uh, this is the definitely inherent uh, property of uh, English syntax. A lot of uh, uh, grammar relation they are happen to be the surrounding very surrounding words. Usually will not be uh, the relation that happen uh, very very uh, far away from each other. So uh, this is the, the the two reasons they they didn't really find the obvious uh, patterns for such a the word to word relation. And uh, for the classi classification token, they, they want to see uh, when the, when this token is being processed in the last layer. Why is last layer? Because the model is going to make a decision according to the the the, the representation of this token's last layer representation. So that's why they pay the the last layer is extra meaningful. And uh, what I found was the uh, the separator token actually gets attended the most when the model is processing the classification token. That actually makes sense because of a lot of uh, uh, glue tasks are pairwise classification. So uh, you need to understand the boundary of the sentence of the sentences. That's very important for for the task. And uh, Apart from that, uh, the punctuation tokens also got attended a lot. Uh, why? Because the punctuation tokens are actually have a very very uh, similar uh, function like the separator. Because even you don't but get attention, pay attention to separator, you will still have like the period, uh, the question marks, those punctuators, those punctuations they separate sentences. So that actually makes sense. So this just tells us the the, the sentence boundary uh, is very very important to to the model, and uh, this is their the results. So as you can see, when they process when the model process the the classification token in the last layer, you actually pay most attention to to separate tokens, separator tokens, uh, no matter what kind of task it is. And uh, this is the number of layer one, two, three, four, five to twelve, and uh, this is like different uh, tokens: uh, pronoun tokens, verb tokens, subject tokens, classification tokens, noun tokens, object tokens, neg negation negation tokens, separator tokens. And uh, for the most task, uh, the models pay uh, very heavy attention to the separator tokens, and for certain tasks like uh, STS. Uh, task B, uh, model actually pay also pay a lot of attention to noun. Um, this is interesting, but and uh, like this task, this task Q and L I, uh, model also pay quite a lot of attention to noun and also pay some attention to verb, but it's just not really obvious uh, compared to uh, the attention uh, the model paying to separator tokens. So this is the result, and uh, it's actually quite interesting if we can dive deeper to what kind of linguistics meaning for each task. They will be more interesting. Uh, and uh, the, the last experiment they did was to, because the, the experiment just says, even you have so many attention heads, 144, but most of them are actually doing the same thing, paying attention to separator tokens, pay, pay attention to classification tokens, Pay attention to punctu uh, punctuation tokens. You don't probably need that many attention heads. So what I did, what I did was to uh, disable to disable certain attention heads, and uh, to see if the performance will be increased or will be dropped. And uh, uh, how they disable the attention heads? Definitely, you cannot just uh, remove the attention head because the like, book architecture. Uh, the nature of bird architecture and the validity was just to assign the equal attention value to every token. So basically, the model will pay uh, equal attention to every token, to each token, and that just uh, means the model is not pay pay paying attention to any tokens equivalently. Yeah. 
and uh, it's definitely not 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 hard to do in in the code. So the, the implementation, and uh, as you can see, if you disable one head in one leg, one head at a time, one out of one hundred forty-four, then you will see sometimes the model will give you uh, the better performance. And the origin line basically means the baseline is like when you are not when you are not disabled in anything then the model performance and like this first uh, is task uh, the color is like the, the darker the better the, the performance the better and uh, you can see uh, for a lot of uh, heads that you when you disable then they actually give you the, the stronger result and like this also so this the argument actually attention heads probably not all of them are necessary and this is another experiment uh, basically is they disable the whole attention heads in one layer and uh, when they have 12 layers so they can if for each task they have 12 value and orange lines again is a uh, baseline so as you can see when you disable uh, the last few layers attention heads, uh, the performance actually increase a lot. And also when you disable the first one, performance also gain a lot. And like this task is also interesting. Only when you disable the first few layers attention heads, the model performance will be increased. But when you disable the last few layers attention heads, the model perform perform performance actually drops. But in general, the model performance uh, didn't get affected too much when you disable even the whole layer uh, attention heads. This is interesting and is inspiring. Probably in the future work, uh, will some probably there will be some people looking into uh, more mathematical mathematical explanation for attention heads. Yeah. So the conclusion of this experiment just says um, attention heads are not really important not not all of them are important you can disable some of them and uh, probably disable attention heads can be viewed as uh, one kind of regularization so uh, they in their previous uh, experiment they also found out that like, two out of uh, 144 attention heads are two of just two of them are uh, actually encoded some linguistic patterns, uh, friend net patterns, and uh, the assumption definitely is like those two attention heads probably are uh, very important. If you disable them, the model performance probably will drop a lot, and so they they did they disable them and they found out either you did disable one of them, the model performance uh, did not drop, did not drop, which means. Uh, those two attention heads are not really important for model to make judgment. So what the model, the bird model actually paying attention, um, I mean, leverage into uh, in terms of attention heads, that's an interesting question. So that's why they look into, uh, they manually check uh, what kind of attention patterns are there. Uh, Okay, so uh, basically what I found was the model actually look into um, the same word comparison. Uh, for example, for these two tasks, STS and the RTE, uh, they look into the fine tune model's attention heads. And they find out in, in these two heads, uh, the, the head one in the first layer and the, the head twelve in the second layer, they are paying extra attention to the words that appear in both sentences because these two tasks are actually pairwise sentence classification which means your input is, your input is two sentences and uh, the model actually doing when 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 you have the words they show up in both sentences the model will pay extra attention to these two words and what the model actually uh, equivalently doing is they are doing word by word comparison to measure similarity because intuitively linguistically if you have more words 
uh, are the same in two sentences, more likely uh, these two sentences are similar. Definitely, this is not absolute, but there there is some strong correlation, and this is what model is looking into. I mean, this is quite interesting, but they this is the only pattern they they found. They didn't find other patterns, and that's a little bit uh, frustrating. So probably bird is not really doing that many things as we expected, because we probably expected the bird will also pay attention to negation words. Negation words means not, no, don't. This kind of uh, denying words, and per the bird model is not paying attention to that. Okay, so anyway, uh, this leads brings us to the conclusion: what this paper actually contributed to 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 the NLP world. And they contribute their contribution. I would say is like they provide methods they for analyzing the bird self attention mechanisms, and uh, the other people can use this the same methodology in the future. I think there will be pretty interesting to see more uh, line of this work, and uh, they also compare the attention mechanism between attention attention patterns between the preacher model. And uh, the fine-tune model, and they found out the, for the last few layers, they just change a lot after fine-tuning. And uh, also, they didn't find out the the, the word-to-word relation uh, got embedded in, in in the bird attention heads too much. And they, their guess is this is probably because of the nature of English. Because English have the lower variety of self-attention patterns, most of the word relationships just happen happen to happen in the, the previous word and the next word. So that's why they want to investigate uh, more on the verb final language. For example, Japanese, the verb is always show up in the end of the sentence. Then also they want to investigate the the free world order languages, which which is the language where um, the world order is, does doesn't really matter. And uh, in that case, the world and world to world relation will probably be very important or very different from English. So it's their future work, and I would say this is a very inspiring um, paper. And yeah, that's the. The end of this presentation, the, this uh, video. So, um, if you would like to receive more uh, deep learning explaining videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Again, your subscription is my greater support to make more videos like this. And uh, other than that, um, take care, and I will see you in the near future.